Mr. Gorbachev teared down this wall. In my lifetime, I have seen the Cold War between the East and the West dissolve. We welcome change and openness, for we believe that freedom and security go together. In my lifetime, I've seen the Berlin Wall come down. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence. In my lifetime, I have seen apartheid dismantled. It is absolutely important that you have the knowledge to serve your country and your people. In my lifetime, I've seen the man of color in the White House. And out of many, we are one. That while we breathe, we hope. And those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. In my lifetime, I've seen grassroots movements topple governments through the use of social media. I want freedom. Freedom. Only freedom. freedom. We can come together to heal segregation and redirect civilization to the celebration of diversity in oneness. We can make it happen. I am Brother Ishmael and I believe that world peace is possible in our lifetime. It begins with you and I now. The elders have gone into silence to meditate for the community, for the nation. This is what we must do in Ghana if we go by our cultural directions. When there is opening of parliament, parliamentarians who got drunk even the previous day will go to parliament and think about laws to run our nation. What can they think? They will think alcoholic thoughts. Yes, but imagine we are having a nation, seriously, where before opening your parliament, there is 30 days like our elders do, in silence. And then they meet at plenary sessions to deliberate. 30 days of silence with spirit. Don't you think we will have a great change in this country? And it's in our culture. But when we are brainwashed, everything African is evil, we throw it away. And today, when there's an official ceremony, Christian priests will pray, a Muslim uh, a leader will pray, traditional priests have now been scrapped out of the book. This is shame on Ghana. Shame on our elders. I, I'm speaking it for television. This is wrong. Evil. It's a negation of ourselves. We are saying we are evil. Everything African is evil. We will never prosper. No African country will prosper until we begin to accept who and what we are as Africans and believe in our own selves. No African country will make it. We have tried the Western ways. They have not worked. We have to return to ourselves. Watch Africa, it is sinking. Because we are going away from everything African. 30 days of silence by elders. Then they have banned on drumming and noise making. Because every family head, every clan head goes into seclusion. So they can bring directions for their clans, for their small families, and then the chiefs and the spiritual elders for the entire community. So thinking ingredients. When we apply this, we'll have the BCEs and the MCEs, uh, uh, assemblymen, whatnot, they will have all of them on gradient, going for 30 days of inner contemplation. In Islam, we have it 30 days of Ramadan and so on. Good morning. Good morning. So tell somebody, wake up. A theory machine we are known to believe in our Africanness and culture.
and we are proud. I'll be, I'll proudly lead a nation of people who are broad-minded, open-eyed, than a bunch of ignorant word I don't want to use. A bunch of ignorant word I don't want to use to, to describe them. So it is not Eastern, it is what? African. Yes? Some people believe that meditation means you must sit down and be blank, not thinking anything. I trust somebody go that way, it may be okay, but if it's okay, the way I know is that the ocean cannot help itself but to bring out waves. And when you are in the silent, your mind cannot help itself but to bring out thoughts. So you cannot stop thoughts, but you can direct thoughts. We have a program called Mind Mentoring. Whenever we announce it, participate so you gain access to your mind. If not, you'll be doing cockroach meditation. Those of you who meditate, have you observed that the time you sit down to be quiet and listen to God is the time the things you don't like keep coming to your mind? Any hand? Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you. And you are therefore doing what? Cockroach meditation. That's why it's important I teach this science. Because when you are relaxed, then the pains, the hurts, the injuries that people have done against you, they all keep coming and they are asking for attention. It will be better you, you attend to them and tell them, you know what? This period is for my silence to listen to God's love. So I will give you attention when I'm ready. You may leave now. When you practice this over time, your thoughts will begin to hear the voice of your spirit and will begin to obey. You've never had dialogue with your own thoughts. So your thoughts keep chasing you. Thoughts you don't like keep interfering with you all the time. You don't have access to your own mind. My man is the greatest handiwork of God. Your mind is the greatest laboratory. When you don't have access to your own mind, then you are actually empty. Because that's where everything starts from, yes? And the mind is not in the brain. The mind is not here. Your brains are in the skull of the head. Your mind is a non-local, non-tangible spiritual reality. It extends from you to the infinite universe. So when you think of the stars, your mind is where? On the stars. So there are many myths, but I want to just release these few. And now let's talk about the benefits of me meditation. Bible has told us. Scientifically, there have been scientific research on people who have uh, hypertension, diabetes, and other stress-related diseases. And it's been realized that meditation offers deep relaxation. Sometimes it offers deeper relaxation than sleep. And therefore, it's very useful for the release of stress and stress-related diseases. Worry, anxiety, tension, fear are all stress cysts and they cause diseases in your body. As you know, fear can cause a woman to have premature menstruation. Is that true? Yes. I don't hear it from the women. Yes. Similarly, any stress in the mind can cause other diseases, physical diseases, can also cause uh, even the interference of your creativity, so you will not be able to pro prosper. So high blood pressure, diabetes, and then financial stresses can all be reduced by people who meditate regularly. Because we all know that concentration is the master key to success, yes? If your child doesn't concentrate on the studies, can the child learn? So you want the child to say concentrate. Meditation is a time of relaxed concentration. You are not pushing the brain or the mind. You are just observing and learning. So meditation reduces anxiety, tension, headaches, uh, ulcers, tension ulcers. We have some ulcers that are caused by uh, worry. 
there are some people when they are having ulcer and they will observe whenever anything disturbs them, then the pain is there. So the cause of your ulcer or that stomach or abdomen problem came from stress. And the cure, therefore, must be where? In meditation. Not taking uh, all of those drugs. Yes? God. So meditation helps you. Insomnia means people who cannot sleep. If you go to bed and you cannot sleep, should that be a worry? There are times I cannot sleep. I sit down and I meditate. Then I receive information and I write. And when the body feels asleep, it sleeps. So there's no quarrel. There are people whose tension is so much that watch you. Many people, your tension is in your sh shoulders. So you find them always walking with their shoulders. As they are talking to you, watch them. Their, their shoulders are up. Or when you, you find talking to them and then their fingers are going like this. They are expressing tension. Can you see it? Uh -huh. They're just rubbing their fingers and their head like that. Tension. Good morning. So all of these tell you that if I'm tense, then I'm blocking something. I'm blocking flow of energy. Tension blocks the flow of electrical energy in your system. The spiritual electricity is blocked. So meditation, therefore, improves your immune system. So you're able to resist diseases. It raises your energy level, and uh, you gain access to your own inner energy. If I talk of the benefits of meditation, we will not end. So many. So Bible summarized by saying, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever you do, you will prosper. But primarily, meditation means you gain access to your inner world. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God is where? I don't hear you. Within you. So meditation gives you access to that within. So you can access all the riches of the kingdom of God. He said, my father's house are many mansions. In you are the mansions of love, joy, wisdom. How do you access all of these? Through meditation. It awakens your intuition. Intuition is the teacher that teaches you from within. The in tutor is intuition. It teaches you from within. So you are no more uh, just dependent on what people tell you. Your spirit can connect with the spirit of God to receive teaching. Bible says, and they shall be taught by the spirit of God. Meditation gives you that connection to receive teaching from God. And therefore opens you to the potentials of the kingdom of God, which Jesus said is within you. The benefits are many. It sharpens your intellect. It makes you smarter. Meditation, it offers thorough relaxation, promotes concentration, gives you mental clarity, increases your creativity, and I may go on and on. But overall, it brings you into equilibrium. Equilibrium means balance. It brings you into equilibrium or balance by harmonizing your outer desires with inner realities. This is what I want. What is God's idea for what I, I want? Then you go into meditation. I want to marry this woman. But what is God's idea about marrying this woman? Then you go into meditation. Meditation makes you be able to listen to God. And when I finish this topic on meditation, the next topic will be the art and science of listening to God. So that's why I started to start with meditation before I take you to that master topic. When do you meditate? Anytime, anywhere. You can meditate while even cooking. For so long as attention is on cooking and the wonderment of the nourishment this will bring to the family, you are meditating. Whenever you want to make any of the benefits of meditation I have shared, then you can do what? Meditate. You want mental clarity? Meditate. And when you do it regularly, then you gain it. Often the medicines you take, you don't take them for a day. You take them three times a day, four times a day. And you do those religiously. Meditation must also be done what? Religiously. For you to have any benefit. How do you meditate? Now let's come to the, the how. How do you meditate? First, locate a convenient time. It's ideal to have a time that you can do it regularly, repeatedly. At least once a day. Three, four times a day, better. 
Every afternoon when you have a, a break, you go to lunch, come to the office early, and spend some five minutes in silence with yourself. Locate a quiet place so you are not disturbed or distracted. This is why it is very sad when I go to my altar room in my house. Somebody is in my altar room. So now I have to find some other times when they are not doing their Amen. Be in comfortable posture. And this is very important. Meditation must relax you. You see, all things are achieved by gentle willing and acceptance, not by stress. All right? Um, whispering with, with spirit. So locate a quiet place, a comfortable posture. And when we say comfortable posture, please let me push this chair here and sit for, for you. You see, sit, fit together if that is comfortable. Some sit, and when we say fit to, together, they bring their feet together and their thighs together like this. Within a few minutes, the thighs are tired. When you sit down with thighs close up, within two minutes, you will feel tired. You are now doing cockroach meditation. Are we clear? So feet together means feet together. It doesn't mean thighs also together. You can also keep your feet slightly apart. So the body is straight, erect but not rigid. People are meditating. Am I meditating or am I in the battlefield? <laughs> Relax the muscles of your face. Check your entire body. So assume a comfortable position Trunk of the body erect, but not rigid. You are not military attention. Just relaxed. This state is only to help you so that you do not fall asleep. Because meditation, when you are deeply relaxed, can induce sleep, and you may now not be meditating, but be sleeping meditation, which is also okay. But you want to focus on something, so in a relaxed state. Hands on the laps. The reason is the same, so you are relaxed. When the hands are this way for some time, you'll get tired. That's why we say hands on the laps. With Easterners, Eastern countries, and the Middle East and so on, because they normally sit squatting with their crossed legs, they will advocate that you sit on the floor, which they call the lotus position, with the legs crossed and the hands on the laps. Are we clear? But you are not obliged to sit that way. You can even lie down on your bed and meditate. But it's just that, in so doing, there is a tendency for you to fall asleep. So it's recommended that you get up, sit. And when you are going to meditate straight from sleep, it is good that you start with a few stretches. So the body blood starts flowing before you start meditating. So the energy will be balanced. For, for you. It's also not very good to meditate when you are uh, very full. When you've eaten, you're belly full, and you are meditating, you find a lot of activities are going on in the body, and you feel some discomfort. You are likely to fall asleep, or the attention may waver. You know, whenever you overeat and you go to sleep, you have bad dreams, am I right? So you don't want to have bad meditation too. Sometimes you overeat, you go to sleep, you have bad dreams, and then you say the witches are troubling you. But it's only bad, only overfeeding. Am I right? When also you eat spicy, very spicy food, and you go and sleep, you can likely get bad dreams of people chasing you because there's stress. The body is using energy, so much energy, to address the physical, emotional, and mental uh, wells. So when there is stress, the body will want to picture it for you. The mind thinks in pictures. So it will give you a picture of the stress, 
So you see the stress as dogs chasing you and you flying on top of trees. There are no witches. Don't go and blame your aunties and your uncles. They have not causing it. You are eating wrong food. Sometimes in the churches, they give you fear. So they tell you that, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's going to be well with you, woman. But I want to tell you, woman, it's going to be well. I've seen the devil with a goat head on your head. But I will tell you, I'll pray the Holy Spirit. Oh, it shall be well for you. Amen. The goat head will go. Amen. When you go home, your, your attention will be on what? Goat head. Amen. So you get dreams of people chasing you, and then you go and blame, right? There are two main types of meditation. When it comes to types of meditation, there are two main types. We have contemplative, and then we have a, a more of a realization meditation, which gives you awareness. Awareness or realization meditation. When it comes to contemplative meditation, it normally starts with questions. Or a statement that requires some answers from the universe. A question like, who am I? What am I? To live your whole life and not know who and what you are. Then you just die. It's waste. Am I right? And you go to church for years and sometimes they don't tell you one bit of who you are. God created you in the air world to worship him. Let me tell you truthfully. God does not need anyone to worship him. Your worship does not make God feel any good. God is good already without your worship. Your worship tunes you to the vibratory frequency of God's good. So your worship is for you, not for God. Worship God means today I'm waking up in God's spirit of love. And allowing God's spirit of love to direct my affairs today. Then all of your ways are good in the day. Am I right? Yes. God is not for that Christmas. Somebody who needs to be flattered with your so-called praises. And then God becomes happy that he's come to worship me. Uh, How do I say it? It's a lie. Anna? Udada umu. Enye utro umu. I don't have my, my, my account, eh? It's okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, my way. Utro umu. Enye sa. Amen. Amen. Yes. Udada umu. When the anger is in you and you are praising God, it is what? A lie. God doesn't need anybody's praises. He's not a, a full-headed person wanting you to say something, he feels good. <laughs> God is not that. Stop the nonsense. Worshiping God is awakening in the spirit of God. Galatians 5, 22 to 23 told us the fruit of the Spirit. Waking up in the fruit of God's Spirit is the worship of God. God of love, incarnate in me today. Reveal yourself through me. See through my eyes and hear through my eyes. And see through my eyes and hear through my ears. Touch the world through me, O oh God, and let me not speak except your presence that speaks in me today. O oh God of love, what are you in me today? Then you enter into silence to listen, and that is meditation, and that is worship. So you ask yourself some questions, all right? What gene? You were told that you were created with your chromosomes from your father and mother. What is your spiritual gene? What genes did the universe create you in? This is where you do the spiritual persona works to discover what love qualities do I have? What intelligent qualities of God? What creative qualities of God am I loaded and coded with? Then you find your genes. What cosmic idea of the universe am I? Every inventor inventing a machine has an idea about it, yes? 
your creator, what is his idea about you? Are you living according to God's idea about you? If the machine is not functioning according to the manufacturer, you must take the machine back to the manufacturer. Am I right? When God is God as me, what am I? And how do I operate? Created in God's image and likeness, and I'm God, then what is that God in me like? And how does God operate as me? When you may, may contemplate on this, you are meditating. What is the purpose of this force of anger in me? You realize you are constantly angry. You can meditate on that anger. This anger in me, what is its purpose? This fear, this guilt, this shame. Then you may sometimes find the purposes of these negative emotions. Sometimes anger is there to protect you. Sometimes the shame is to tell you what is not worthy or of you. So even these negative emotions have got some uses, some values for you. At TV Mission, we are not church Christians. We are Jesus Christians. In fact, I find it so strange that people go to church which is supposed to teach them spirituality and there's no spirituality teaching in the churches. <laughs> The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, that God created us in his spiritual image and likeness. In Genesis 2, 7, and then God breathed the spiritual you into the dust and you became a living soul. When we go through even scripture further, the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44, says there is a natural body and then there is a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 tells you, Know you not that you are the temple of the living God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. There are people who are even afraid of the word spirit. Yet Jesus told us in John 4, 24, that God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All these confirm to us that you are a dual being. You have a natural human body, and then you have a spiritual body. And for each of these, you need the appropriate education for a holistic life. We receive natural education by secular education. Secular education takes you from primary school all the way to university for you to be able to provide for yourself good food, clothing, and shelter. Yet without the spirit, even the natural physical body is not animated to live. We're supposed to receive spiritual education from our spiritual or religious institutions, such as our churches, our mosques, whatever religion you belong to. But when it comes to spiritual education, almost all religious bodies are empty. I find it strange that you know you are spirit. You go to church for you to receive spiritual education. And you know the church is not giving you any spiritual education, yet people keep going. Wow. That's why I invite you to Ethereum Mission. Like I said, we are not church Christians. We are Jesus Christians. We follow what the master taught, that you are spirit, and the spirit of God dwells in you as you. The kingdom of God is within you, said the master. Meaning, the power, love, and the spiritual presence of God is within you. Hmm. I welcome you to spiritual study and growth in Ethereum mission. Ideally, look for any Ethereum mission branch and start your spiritual evolution. Because the first blessing God gave you was also your absolute imperative. It said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Meaning that, that you are the very seeds of God or the seed that God is, the presence that God is, is in you as seeds. And you have to grow them into trees and bear fruits of peace, love, joy. That's what the book of Galatians told you, Galatians 5, 22 to 23. If you want spiritual growth, then you know where to come to. Peace.